let's see what were we in we were in january of 2022 in october of 2021 i just stepped down from my role as the chair and commissioner for the new york city commission on human rights that basically meant that i was the top enforcer of human rights protections in new york city which means a lot of anti-discrimination and a lot of anti-harassment protections um this came after a career as being a uh, a lawyer you know um I worked at a kind of big white shoe law firm, Sullivan and Cromwell, doing management side uh, uh, securities litigation. Then I went to work for a plaintiff side, worker side, uh, employment law firm for more than a decade. And from there, I was then appointed by Bill de Blasio to head the human rights agency in New York City. And uh, for me, I think, I've always talked about that work as coming from a very personal place because of my different family and identity issues, because of the many communities I've had the privilege of either being a member of or you know, having a toe in or stepping into or because of the chosen family that I've been fortunate to create around me and my, me and my wife and my children and, and all of that. And so the work, um, I think so much of that comes from who I am. It's very much a manifestation of, I always talk about, I always talk to people about bringing the, the entirety of their lived experience to the work or to their, the, the different spaces that they occupy. Um, and that's very much been a part of that job for me. Um, you know, embracing difference, walking into um, challenge and you know, being able to, to create community, create visibility for folks, um, see the beauty in, in different things. Um, so much of that, I think, comes from my background and from my experience, my spirituality, certainly. I think, you know, when I talk about, especially my religion, or I talk about spirituality with folks, uh, quite often people are surprised, I think, given some of the other facets of my identity, including the fact that you know, I'm queer, I'm lesbian, and some of the other things uh, about me. And what I like to remind people is that, you know, I'm so fortunate that the spirituality I was raised in and I grew up was so much about helping the most vulnerable around us. You know, one of the, one of the constant themes in the Bible is about welcoming the stranger. I actually get a little bit emotional thinking about it and talking about it, but it's such a bedrock of, of my religious identity. Welcome the stranger, you know, don't shut your doors to foreigners, um, helping people who are vulnerable. And it is a constant, you know, it's a, being compassionate, it's a constant thought I have in my head. I don't always succeed in the, um, in my efforts to do that, and I oftentimes forget in moments to be that person, but it's still a constant thought in my head that for me is you know one of my my one of my north stars, frankly. Um, and so the ability to take on that role in New York City was incredibly important to me. The ability to help expand protections for folks who are vulnerable, to create visibility for a lot of those communities. Um, to be myself in this role and walk into spaces where, you know, some kids couldn't believe that I was talking about having a wife or coming out to my parents and so many things. I think the representation part of this was incredibly important to me, incredibly important to me. Um, during, I'm proud to say that during my tenure as the chair and commissioner of the Commission on Human Rights, we almost tripled the size of the agency. Um, we created an agency that spoke over 30 languages so that we can really communicate with the diversity of New York City. We expanded our human rights law, you know, more than 20 times, adding many substantive protections. We were on the forefront of expanding civil rights protections in many different areas, whether you're looking at uh, areas affecting trans and non-binary folks or different uh, religious groups or 
black communities and looking at race discrimination in different ways, like the work that we did, really had an effect on other jurisdictions and in other spaces. And I 100% think that it is not a coincidence that that happened during a time where the head of the agency was a person with all of the different identity characteristics and communities that I've had the privilege of being a part of, that lived experience brought so much to that role and to that position. Um, creating diversity and representation in the organization was incredibly important to me. So I think the fact that we had multiple people who represented so many different identities, especially identities that are oftentimes, um, you know, frankly, oppressed by government, was incredibly important. You know, I have many memories of, uh, of of situations in which people said, "Wow, you know, it is crazy to me that I don't have to explain what it means to be non-binary. It's crazy to me that I'm walking to your office and there's multiple hijabi folks here. I've never seen that, especially at a government agency. Different types of identities. I could go on and on, but." I think that's so important to give people an understanding that, you know, we see you, we understand you, we're from your communities. Especially when we're talking about something like discrimination and harassment, such personal things, people, things that people feel so close to their identity and they feel so vulnerable about. It is hard for people to talk about discrimination and harassment issues, even with people that they are really close to, much less having to divulge that to a total stranger, or much less having to do that to somebody in law enforcement or in government. And the fact that we were able to bring that level of familiarity and comfort to people in those dark situations is, is something I'm so proud of. Um, and I feel incredibly grateful to, to my staff for being a part of that, um, of that process. You know, during my time as commissioner, the size of my agency grew from 55 to I think the height was 160. And I'm going to say over 95% of the people on my staff, people who joined the Commission on Human Rights during that time, were people who, it was their first time in government. So it was both for them kind of this, uh, this declaration, if you will, of this is our government too, and we're going to we're gonna represent and we're going to make government what we think it should be. It was both a declaration of that and it was also just a, you know, uh, 